All right, folks, what you just saw are the hang fires that we experienced in our last video. And we actually had two complete misfires. So that's the purpose of today's video. I want to investigate these hang fires. I want to see if there's anything we can do to eliminate them. And at least here for the first video in this investigation, which it may end up just being one video. I don't know. It all depends on what we learn today. But today's video is really going to be heavily focused on primers. That's the most obvious cause. Because here's what's here's what actually happened. And I'm very we're very lucky that we got the two misfires because it gave us some rounds to tear apart so we could see exactly what was going on. The first thing are the two primers that came out of those rounds. There you can see that they're blackened and they definitely went off. And if we look at the powder, you'll see there are these clumps. This clumped up powder that on one side has a rusty reddish brown look to it instead of the normal black like it started out. Now this reddish powder, this clumped up powder came from the very bottom of the case. Whenever I pulled out the bullet, dumped out the powder, most of it flowed right out, but the powder at the bottom down near the flash hole, I had to tap on the cases to get these clumps to come apart and finally come out of the case. So it seems like the primer went off, the flash or the flame or whatever, it came out of the flash hole and hit the powder that's where it turned rusty looking and clumped up, but it just didn't actually ignite. So a couple possible causes. The most obvious is primers, and that's going to be the main focus of today's video, is trying a bunch of primers and seeing if the problem is widespread through many different brands and styles, or whether it's possibly specific to the primer we were using. But a couple other possible causes. For one, cold, cold temperatures. It was 20 degrees outside in our previous video. Today's video, where we're going to go out and shoot some more, it's going to be up in the 40s, so a good bit warmer. Another possible cause is case fill. In that last video, we shot two powders. We shot Accurate 4350, which gave us no problems whatsoever. This is a single base extruded powder. Our case fill was excellent. We had an almost full case of powder, and we had no problems with hang fires whatsoever with Accurate 4350. Then we switch to Vitavori N550. This is one of their high energy powders. This is a double base powder. Now like uh, single base powder, it's nitro nitrocellulose with additives and crap I'm sure, but the base is nitrocellulose. A double base powder brings in nitroglycerin, the stuff from dynamite. Now we're still, you know, still just getting into 6.5 Creedmoor but I think I've had some slight hang fires in the past, but it wasn't nearly as obvious as it is here with N550. Another powder we've shot quite a bit, Reloader 17, that's another double base powder. So is that possibly part of it? Like the double base powders are just more difficult to ignite. I don't know. But here with N550, our charge weights were very small and we had a lot of excess case capacity, right? Our, our cases were just not nearly full. Maybe they were 75% full something like that. So did that extra empty space in the case have something to do with it being difficult to uh, ignite? I don't know. Now we are using small rifle primers. In 6.5 Creedmoor, different brass uses different size primers. On the top here, you'll see a piece of Hornady brass that uses a large primer. And on the bottom is the Starline brass we've primarily been using that uses a small primer. Now, if we switch to a large primer, is the problem going to go completely away? We're going to find out. We're going to shoot some large primers today. And I also want to try a bunch of different small primers to see if things get better or worse. Here are a whole bunch of primers. What we've been using is the CCI 450 Magnum small rifle primer. Now a Magnum primer should be on the hotter side of things, right? So if this Magnum primer can't light it off, I suspect that if we go with some standard primers, like let's go with uh, the CCI 400. This is the standard non-magnum version from CCI. I would expect the problem to get worse. We're gonna test it. Some other primers we've got. The only federal small rifle primers I've got are these AR small rifle match primers. So we're gonna try some of those. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the other federal small rifle primers. I wanna try the Remington 7.5 small rifle bench rest primers. I want to try the S&B small rifle primers. I have observed lower velocities with these, especially in 300 blackout. 
I think we tested them in 223, but I can't remember for sure how they performed. But as far as I know, this is a pretty cool primer, right? It's not, uh, it's not a hot primer. It's certainly not a Magnum primer. I don't think. I'm going to test that guy. We're going to test the Winchester small rifle primer, the WSR. I want to test the CCI BR4, which is the CCI Benchrest primer. And I want to test the CCI number 41, which is the military type primer for 5.56 ammunition. Those are all of the small rifle primers I have on hand. So I want to test them all. We're going to load up five shot groups with all of them and just go out and see what happens. Now, I also want to shoot a couple large primers. The first is the CCI 200 large rifle primer. And the other is the Winchester WLR large rifle primer. Those are the only two large rifle primers I have on hand. Now for brass in the large rifle primers, we are, we're going to use the Hornady brass that, you know, that has the large primer pocket. The other thing I've done is I went ahead and used a flash hole deburring tool to make sure the flash holes are nice and clean, no burrs. So we shouldn't have any flash hole problems. The Starline brass we've been using with the small primers, these have got pretty clean flash holes. But just to be sure, just to make certain, I'm going to go ahead and take the pieces we used today and hit them with the deburr, just for the heck of it, just to make sure there's nothing going on there that might be causing us issues. We're going to use the same bullet from the last video, the 140 grain Barnes match burners just because the die's already set. They shot reasonably well. You know, the groups from today's video, we're gonna shoot groups. I'm gonna do my best to shoot good groups, but it's not really about the groups, right? It's about the hang fires. And like I said, we're gonna use Vitavori N550, and we're just gonna take the middle load from the last video, which was 37.5 grains. It gave us about 2,460 feet per second in the last video. So it's a nice light load, very light load. So if we run into varying pressures with the different uh, primers, like you know switching over to the large primers, are we gonna see a huge jump in pressure and velocity? Possibly, this load should be nice and safe and light so we won't blow our face off. Now, one other test I wanna do. Like I had mentioned, these are I've still got seven rounds that we loaded from the last video. We'll shoot these guys as well, just to verify the problem in today's temperature. Now, if we go out and these first seven shoot just fine, that will lead us to believe that, you know, it was really just all temperature related. But that's what we're gonna do with these first seven. And like I mentioned, there's a ton of ex excess case capacity here with this powder. So what I wanna do, so th these are with the CCI 450 primers that we shot in the last video. I wanna load up five more rounds with the CCI 450 primer, but this time I wanna add a little bit of a case filler. I've got some cotton here, I've done a bunch of previous testing with case fillers in 300 blackout and it was a bit of a disaster. This is cotton. That's not really the best thing to use, I don't think, but I don't have any more polyfill, you know, which is a lot like cotton, but it's a uh, synthetic material that doesn't burn quite so easily. But that's what I wanna do is I want to take five rounds with the CCI 450 and just lightly put some fluffy cotton down in the case so that the powder so that we can be certain that the powder is getting held up against that flash hole nice and tight. The way the clumps came out, you know, the powder clumps came out of the case, I feel like the powder was probably up against the flash hole and I don't think the case filler is gonna make much difference, but I wanna test it anyway. I'm a little bit worried about this test and actually I've got a uh, commercial product. Hold on one second, I'll go grab it. Here we go, this stuff is called Pufflon. I had bought this to try out in 300 blackout. It's a lubricating ballistic filler. And you fill up the empty portion of the case with this, and it helps to combat the problems you would have with uh, too much excess case capacity. I'm a little bit freaked out about doing this in a high velocity, high pressure cartridge like this. You know, a subsonic 300 blackout is a whole lot different than a 6.5 Creedmoor going 2,500 feet per second. So I'm afraid that displacing a bunch of case capacity with this stuff might raise pressures a ton and get me into trouble. So I thought maybe the, you know, a little bit of fluffy cotton, just enough to, uh, I'm not gonna pack it in there. I'm, I'm not gonna pack it in there like crazy. I just want enough in there so that we can kind of delicately take the round. We'll single load them and make sure that we don't uh, 
slam them into the chamber too hard and get the powder moving or whatever, just enough to kind of keep that powder in place. Might be a waste of time, but then again, maybe not. All right, I've been rambling and I don't even know if I covered everything I needed to cover. The charge weights, I'm just gonna throw the charges with my uh, RCBS Uniflow powder measure. I don't really care about precision. We're, we're at a nice light charge to where if I'm a 10th or two grains off, it doesn't matter at all. But this Vitivore N550 is a shortcut extruded powder and it actually meters pretty well. I, I've already set, the, uh, set up my powder measure and it was throwing them right on the money. So I think we'll be just fine there. You know, this is, this is a good opportunity. Like I'm seeing this as an opportunity because if, if you've ever tried to fix a problem, we've all tried to fix a problem of one sort or another, but the most important thing is being able to recreate a problem. If your car makes a funny noise three days ago, and since then it hasn't made any noises at all, and you take it to the mechanic, you've got about a 95% chance that they're not gonna find anything. They can't recreate a problem that you can't recreate, right? But anytime you've got a problem that is repeatable and consistent, that's when you can change variables and get good feedback. And I'm hoping that's, you know, the situation we're in right now. I'm hoping this N550 is just hard to ignite. You know, maybe it's gonna need large primers. So what? But here with the small primers, maybe it'll give us an opportunity to get a better idea of which small primers are the hottest or ignite double base powders the best. I've done a lot of primer testing on this channel and it's always extremely difficult to get good, reliable, useful feedback from the data you collect. So I'm hoping this is just gonna be the perfect scenario where maybe we can learn exactly which primer is best for 6.5 Creedmoor. I don't know. That's a lofty goal, we'll see. So what I need to do, I've already got started. I've got my 10 pieces of Hornady brass that I've already flash hole deburred and chamfered the case mouth. For our large primers, I need to continue pulling out our small primer brass and doing the same. So there's not much you know, to see here with loading. The powder measure set up, the dies are set from the last video. So we'll be on the range here in just a minute. All right, first of all, let me see if I can get you a look at the case fill. Yeah, I'm really not gonna be able to. It's just too hard to see. But it seems to be about right there, which isn't quite as bad as I thought it was. But uh, yeah, looking down in there, I think it's right about in there. So these first five that I'm loading are the ones I'm gonna put a little bit of cotton into. See, I just got a little, a little tuft of cotton. And I poke down in there just a little bit and then there we go. So that should be enough to keep the powder pushed up against that flash hole, I believe. So to try to keep these primers straight, I'm just doing these five at a time. I'm using my RCBS hand priming tool. Pulling out five primers, moving that package over to the done pile. Install them like normal. Throw those five charges. and then seat bullets in these fives. Seating die still set from the last video, so nothing really to see there. And you know, those first five with the CCI 450, those are the only ones that are getting any cotton. The rest of these, I'm not doing any sort of filler. Just wanna make that clear. All right, those five go in the case and then move on to the next five. And that's pretty much it. So nothing exciting to see here. So let's just skip forward and I'll see you guys out on the range. All right, folks, welcome to the range. We're shooting at 100 yards. The dots are one inch in diameter.
This is our Thompson Center Compass. It's got a 22 inch barrel with a one and eight twist. We're shooting through a Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. I've got a Magneto Speed Chronograph on there. And our scope is a four to 16 Vortex. We've got a little cleanup to do from the last video, right? There's seven shots that we never fired. I wanna go ahead and shoot them first. That'll give us an opportunity to verify that we're still observing the problem we saw in the last video. The temperature when I walked out the door was 40 degrees. So it's right at 20 degrees warmer today than it was in the last video. The ammo has been sitting outside in the shade for about an hour and a half. So it should have had plenty of time to cool down and get to, uh, get to temperature. The first ones we need to shoot here are 37.5 grains of N550. We've got two shots left. So let's get these knocked out and see if we can still observe the problem. I think what I want to try and do, I'm going to move my microphone up here near the action. So hopefully it'll pick up the, the firing pin dropping before the gun goes off a little bit better than it did last time. All right, no hang fire on those first two. And it looks like we picked up 40 feet per second. We went from 2462 up to 2504 this time. This is gonna be a pretty lame video if we don't have any hang fires. Okay, next up, 38.0 grains. There was one, that was a hang fire. Yep, that one hung just a tiny little amount as well. And that fifth one was fine. So what was that, two of them? Or, yeah, I think two of them hung just a little bit out of that group. All right, now, now to our main story for today. These first five are the CCI 450 primers with the cotton filler and 37.5 grains of N550. So the cotton has gotten rid of all, like I don't feel any powder movement at all when I shake the case. But just to be sure, I'm going to kind of give these guys a little tap on the table, make sure that the powder is settled down, and then I'm going to carefully single load these guys before I shoot them. Now this has got me a little bit nervous. I don't know what to expect here as to what this is going to do to velocity. It should be right around 2,500 feet per second. So we'll see if it spikes up here, or maybe it'll blow my face off. We'll see what happens. Okay, the velocity of that one was 2617. So that is 113 feet per second faster than the same charge weight with no filler. That's kind of pretty incredible. Now, we did not get a hang fire, so let's go ahead and keep shooting. All right, so accuracy was not impressive, but we didn't have any hang fires at all. That velocity is just crazy, 2594. So we basically gained 100 feet per second by adding a little bit of cotton. That was a pretty nerve wracking test. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous on that one. All right, now onto some normal tests. Next up is the, is the CCI BR4. We're gonna load these guys from the magazine and shoot them like normal. So let's see what happens. Little bit of hang fire that time. All right, so we had two noticeable hangers there with the BR4, velocity 2522, a little bit hotter than the 450 gave us, which is interesting. So next up is the CCI 400. I got the tiniest little bit of hang fire on that one. Same thing on that one. All 
All right, so that wasn't as bad as I thought it might be. There were only two, and they were very, very slight. They might not have even been picked up on camera. Velocity back down to 2,500, which is what we saw with the 450. Interesting. It's what we saw with the 450 without the filler, I should say. All right, next is the last of our CCI small primers, the CCI 41. Okay, now that is extremely interesting. Same velocity, 24.99. By far our best standard deviation so far of 6.7. And none of those hung at all. Some of these are very subtle. Like it, it almost takes me a second to process what just happened. Like did that hang a little or not? All of those were zero delay. No question about it. Went off no problem. So very, very interesting result with the CCI 41. All right, so we're leaving the world of CCI, and next up is gonna be the Winchester WSR. Just to recap, we didn't get any hang fires with the 450 with the filler, with the cotton filler, but we did get some with the 38 grain charge, we got some with the BR4, and we got some with the CCI 400. All right, so let's move on. Next up, Winchester WSR. All right, I did not feel any hang fires that time at all with the Winchester WSR. So next up is the Federal AR Match Primer. Let's see how it does. Wow, really good showing for the Federal AR match. Excellent standard deviation. I didn't feel any hang fires. Interesting. So next up is the Remington 7.5. All right, our test has kind of fallen apart on me here. It's been 20 shots since I had any hang fires. The Remington 7.5 there kind of had a weird point of impact shift in probably our crappiest group so far. So we've only got one more small rifle primer left, and that is the S&B primer. So let's see what it does. There was a hang fire. That was a pretty good one too. Yep, that one was pretty gross as well. All right, misfire. I'm going to let it sit here and cook for a minute. All right, it's been about a minute or so. Should be safe now, hopefully. Moving right along. And a second misfire. All right, it's been a minute or so. Hopefully we're safe. All right, three bad hang fires and two misfires. Not a good showing for the S&B. Now it's time to move over to some large rifle primers. The first one is the CCI 200. So let's see what it does. All right, no hang fires. We did lose a little bit of velocity down to 2467, but keep in mind we switched uh, brands of brass. So we have to keep case capacity in mind and all of that stuff. So a lot of factors in play here as we switch from the small primers to the large primers. All right, five more shots to go. 
Our last primer is the Winchester WLR. All right, we have got a lot to think about. So let's get back to the bench and get to thinking about it. Okay, so our results were not quite as dramatic as I was hoping for or what I expected. I think we're gonna need a follow-up video, but there's still a good bit that we've learned. The first thing, I pulled apart uh, one of the misfires we had. It's the exact same failure as we saw in the last video. The primer went off and the powder at the base of the cartridge is discolored and clumped together. It's exactly like the pictures I showed you earlier, so I'm not gonna waste your time showing you pictures of that. The test with the cotton case filler, I don't know what to think about it. For one thing, I'm not gonna be messing with that anymore. It really kind of freaked me out. So it didn't have any, it didn't have any hang fires, it didn't have any misfires, and we saw that big jump in velocity of like 80 feet per second. But I'm still not sure whether so did it not have any hang fires because the the because of the positioning of the powder like you know the powder being held tighter against the flash hole or was it from the air getting displaced out of the cartridge or you know the effective case capacity being reduced and that somehow making for a better environment for the powder to light I'm not sure and I don't really know of a good way to test it further and I don't really know that I want to test it any further. It, it's definitely not a long-term solution in my case. I have zero interest in using case fillers of any type in you know high-velocity cartridges like this, like I had mentioned earlier. So I don't really know what to do with the information about you know the case filler ones uh, lighting off okay. I, I don't really know what to do with that info. I'm not sure how to interpret it. Let's have a quick look at the groups. Speaking of the case filler, that was by far our worst group of the day. It was 1.98 inches. And I'm not that surprised about that because as I was reading up, I, you know, I showed that Pufflon stuff earlier. Where'd it go? There it is. I showed this Pufflon stuff earlier and reading on their website a little bit and stuff, they did mention that you, you'll see poor accuracy with boat tail bullets a lot of times. So I guess that, you know, wad of gunk behind that boat tail bullet just jacks with the uh, jacks with the way it flies and, and, and screws up your accuracy. So not a huge surprise there. Beyond that, there was a three-way tie for the worst group at 1.43 inches. The Winchester WSR, the Remington 7.5, and, and the CCI 200 primer all shot 1.43 inch groups. The two best were the CCI 41 at a 0.86 inch group and the Federal AR match primer at a 1.01 inch group. This is not a, not a particularly good load, right? It's just not, but it served our purpose well. Velocity varied a little bit, you know, t t taking away the filler one that was uh, 2594. The next highest was the BR4, and then the 400, the 41, the WSR, and the Federal AR were all right at 2500 feet per second. And the Remington 7.5 and the, and the S&B primer were about 20 feet per second slower. Now the large rifle stuff in the Hornady brass, we have no baseline to work from here. We can't really directly compare it. They were a little bit slower at 20, 2467 and 2477, but I don't really blame the primers here. They both had good, good standard deviation numbers, a 9.3 and a 5.1. And back to our small primers, our best, to, our best group with the, the CCI 41 also had the best standard deviation of 6.7. So we had a 6.7 and then an 8.7 down here with the Federal AR. Then the worst was with the WSR. But down to the whole point of the video with the failures, the ones with the red circles are the ones where we had failures. The, the CCI 450 with the filler didn't have any failures, but the 450 gets a failure from the previous video and the first seven shots we took in this video where we had, where we had problems. So CCI 450 is bad. The CCI BR4, we had two hang fires. The CCI 400, we had two hang fires. And then the S and B, we had two misfires, and I think all, you know, these all three of these were hang fires. 
All of the others were fine though. No surprise with the large rifle primers. I would have been shocked if the large, if the large primers had a problem. So on the small primer side of things, we're left with four good primers. The CCI 41, the Winchester WSR, the Federal AR Match, and the Remington 7.5. So how do we further test these in the next video? I think we need to go lower with temperature. We need a follow-up video. We need to get these things in a freezer, get them down to around zero, and see how they perform at freezer temperatures. And we'll do the same thing with our two large rifle options. I think there's at least one of these primers that got lucky and snuck through. And I think it's probably the Remington 7.5. There were a couple shots when I was shooting this guy where I thought it might be a very slight misfire, but it really wasn't enough to call it. So I'm thinking in the next video, we take the temperatures way down. I think the Remington 7.5 is going to fall on its face. But that's, that's just a guess at this point. So another thing I've been wondering is about the flash hole design. The, the Starline brass has a standard size flash hole. You take a, uh, a standard decapping pin, we'll go through the flash hole no problem. Now the Lapua brass for 6.5 Creedmoor also uses a small primer pocket, but it has a very small flash hole. It has an extra small flash hole. And I've been trying to think through what the effects of that would be. And you'd have to think like a, a primer has a certain amount of fire or flame or flash or heat or whatever the hell it is that a primer really puts out. And you would think that a smaller flash hole, I'm wondering if that concentrates it more in one area where with the larger flash hole, it's more spread out. And I'm wondering if, you know, a double base powder like this, having your flame concentrated in a smaller spot, I can't help but think that would be more effective at lighting off the powder. Because that's all you're trying to do, right? You're just getting it started. You're just getting it lit, and then it goes on its own. So I'll probably get a hold of some Lapua brass before too long. We're already up. Our next firing on this brass is going to be the fifth firing. So it's not going to last forever. So maybe I can take what I learned from this video and the next video, and whenever I get a hold of some Lapua brass, maybe rerun some tests with the best, with the best and worst primers we identify here in these videos and see if the results are the same with the Lapua. This is interesting stuff to me, man. This is what it's all about. There's so much going on. There's so much I don't understand. There's so much I don't know. And trying to navigate through all of this stuff and make sense of it is what makes this a lot of fun. It can be frustrating, but it's fun. So I've run out of match burners. So for the next video, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I was thinking about buying more of these, but I was also thinking about getting some of the Hornadies. There's a 140 grain Hornady match bullet that I was looking over at Wideners. You can get a 500 pack of them for $118. So that's 24 cents a piece. I'm thinking that might be the best plinking option for 6.5 Creedmoor. So it might be, it might be interesting to, you know, get a nice big box of them and try and work up some good cheap plinking loads. I mean, if you can call 24 cents a piece cheap, not exactly cheap, but about as cheap as I can come up with for for the 6.5 Creedmoor, so I'm not sure what I'll do there. All right, I'm rambling. Wow, I'm really rambling. So I think that's where we'll leave this one. So this is normally the spot where I beg for money, but I don't want to do that today. Instead, I'll just say thank you to all of the supporters at Patreon, all of the people who have sent in donations via PayPal, or given super chats during my live stream. You guys are awesome, and I really appreciate it. So I will see you guys next time.